Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for this special Earth Day webinar conversation with the Polynesian Voyaging Society. I'd like to introduce the Alaska Chair, Joe Nelson. Joe. Thank you, Dixie. Aloha. Happy, happy Earth Day. My Klingit name is Kahuku. I'm from Yakutat. I'm streaming to you today, though, from Aquan um, in, in Juneau. And we've got an exciting short little program here today. There, there's no script. Uh, it just really is true aloha and sharing the love on this Earth Day. And um, having a little bit of a history conversation, but also looking forward conversation uh, about a journey that we're a voyage that's in the works. Uh, and we're happy to be joined by uh, Bruce from Polynesian Voyaging Society and Wahlagi Doc from our Sea Alaska board. I'm gonna ask each of them to just do brief introductions of themselves and we'll get into a conversation and uh, also uh, have room for question and answers. So we budgeted roughly an hour uh, and I'm just excited to, to be, the, be the host for this little convening. And I wanna really um, thank Bruce uh, and, and do this on the opening front end part of it for Bruce. I know um, we, we know that uh, the Polynesian Voyaging Society lost a family member recently. Uh, and we wanna just acknowledge and honor the navigating, the Voyaging Society, the navigators, uh, in particular, the family and friends of uh, Kalepa, uh, Chad, uh, and I didn't know him personally, but I, but I know that it's, it's um, uh, a, a recent loss in the family there. So we wanna do, especially thank you for making the time on this Earth Day. It's been a brutal year just around the globe in many ways uh, with a lot of tremendous loss. Uh, and uh, the thing about life, I guess, is, uh, and death is that things keep moving. Uh, and we keep moving and we have our children and grandchildren uh, uh, to, to look out for. And it is this ocean that connects us. So that's why we're reaching out across the ocean uh, and looking forward to uh, a voyage that I know you're planning and we wanna be gracious hosts uh, the best we can for that voyage that is in the works. So I'll, I'll stop and just ask maybe Wafagi um, Barbara, if you don't mind a brief introduction and then, then Bruce, and then we can dive into a conversation. Barbara Blake, good people, uh, good day to you. My name is Wafal Girak. My English name is Barbara Blake uh, for those of you uh, seeing me for the first time, my family is from Hikta Hunglai. I'm Yak Janas, or even from the Shark House. I am also granddaughter of Flay and from Kloak and the daughter of the Nelchina, the Sky Clan from Chestachina, my father's Atna. So, Hawa Gunishchish Chinan for um, hosting this. And I also want to um, uplift and hold up our Hawaiian brothers and sisters. Um, the passing of, of our good Captain Kalepo was was hard on a lot of us and I'm super thankful that um, we get to be with at least you Uncle Bruce in this time. Um, he was a, a great man and and the captain on on the leg nine of the leg that I got uh, I was blessed to go on for the worldwide voyage and so he'll forever be in our hearts as well here in Alaska. So how a so Bruce, if you don't mind, um, just yeah, tell us where you're at and a brief introduction for folks uh, in the Sea Alaska family that that don't know you yet. If you don't mind sharing just a little bit about your your history and who you are. Okay, uh, aloha mai kako, well, Bruce Koinoa. I'm from uh, the island of Oahu in the Hawaiian uh, by Aina, and I grew up on the uh, southeast side in a small valley called Pulio O. And I, I live in Niu Valley with my family, my wife and our two children and two grandchildren. Um, I've been voyaging with, I started voyaging with uh, Hokulea and the Polynesian Voyaging Society in uh, 1977, right after the first epic voyage, the very first voyage in 1976. And uh, that voyage is a real game changer in so many ways for us in Hawaii. 
Um, anyway, so I've been with them ever since. We've been sailing. And thank you for acknowledging and, uh, your aloha towards uh, Kalepa and his family. It is, uh, I mean, it is such a tragedy to lose someone who was so pivotal in the uh, Voyage movement. Kalepa started uh, at the same time as, uh, as myself in 1977. And um, he's made tremendous contributions and uh, personal sacrifices of time and energy and family <clears throat> to further um, uh, the voyaging and the expansion of it over the decades. So thank you for that. So I'm glad to be here and to share today and to, um, yeah, to talk about uh, things that are voyaging and, and our connection, our, our, our connection to this vital link that is uh, Buananui Akea, uh, the Pacific Ocean. Bunachish, mahalo, Bruce. Just uh, a couple kind of grounding or framing comments first on Sea Alaska. This is a, you know, a Sea Alaska Zoom and uh, we should, you know, no doubt have a number of our shareholders uh, watching right now. And our company has been on a, an amazing journey, you know, for 50 years. We're going to celebrate our 50th anniversary next year. But in the last few years, we've really honed in on ocean health as a priority for the company. And it's this idea that we are literally salmon people. We are fish people, we're ocean going people and we should always be thoughtful about doing better and uh, taking care of the ocean. And that's how, how our organizing principles around our businesses have really uh, given us a pretty clear focus about a direction and a path. Um, that said, you know, we, we, we've always had this relationship for a long time uh, with you over there and, and the Hawaiians, uh, and we were very, you know, honored to be a part of that history with your voyaging and the the Hawaii Loa uh, and the logs that that are still over there um, that we helped donate, and then we had uh, this conference and convening in 2019, uh, and, and just maintaining the relationships. Uh, and there was a group that visited Kona and, and uh, the, the forests and the koa trees. Um, so all, all these things are, are interrelated, but I'm wondering if you don't mind just sharing a little bit about uh, the journey that happened in the 90s uh, and your role there. Uh, and, and then, you know, it's kind of why, why another journey? And, uh, and I'll just share, you know, it was a year ago when the pandemic set in, we literally had sort of the advanced team had tickets to, to come uh, over here to Alaska to scout out some places and to visit some of our villages and uh, the travel freeze put that on hold. It was literally, you know, we were all in tears because the pandemic really stalled the effort, but it's just a brief stall where we're still gonna happen, uh, this, this voyage. And for our part here, we really wanna, you know, be the best host that we can be, uh, knowing that uh, over there, anybody who's visited Hawaii knows that you do that so well and so naturally. Uh, being gracious hosts, and, and we have a lot to learn. So we, we want to just, um, that's why we want to do this with, with more broad community based. So the world is aware that you are going to be visiting us again. Uh, and we want to get ready uh, and, and do right by you. But there is the bigger theme about the ocean health as well that, that, that we're also bringing attention to today on Earth Day. So those are for just a few opening comments on the, you know, see Alaska context uh, uh, and how we're looking forward to the next 50 to 100 years uh, and, and trying to ensure that the oceans are able to take care of our great grandkids just as well as it's taking care of us uh, and the revitalization and the energy that's coming from you is really it ripples around the world and we are, we're just excited to be a part of it and Wafloggy Doc had the benefit of being around and, and uh, being a part of that family so we thought we would just 
dive in and talk about it a little bit with our with our audience here and open the chat for questions in a little while. So I laid broad framework for you to go ahead and dive in wherever you feel like it. Okay, okay, thanks, Joe. You know, let me start with um, Hawaii law and the, the, um, the, the actual seed of an idea to come up and um, come up to the Northwest, up into your, uh, your land and, oh, you know, breach this subject of um, looking for a logs for a, for a voyaging canoe from a, another source than Hawaii. So the, the, the project was to build, after uh, Hokulea had done quite a bit of voyaging from 1976 up to uh, 1987, I mean, 1990, the next project was that, that sprung up was to build a canoe out of native materials. So we did a, we did a log search in a forest up on the big island and uh, the forest, the health of the forest, let me put it that way, the health of the forest was such that we, um, after about three months of searching throughout uh, the Big Island, uh, we couldn't find any trees suitable for uh, a canoe of the size that we were uh, needed, was required. But we know that when King Kamehameha you know, put together a war fleet that was capable, you know, each canoe was probably capable of carrying between 50 to 80 to be even 100 warriors. Those are big craft. They were big canoes and they, they built uh, hundreds of them, you know, so the forest at that time was healthy enough. But by the time we were looking, uh, this was like about 1990, 92, 93, uh, the health had declined and we couldn't find anything suitable. So there was another source historically of uh, uh, trees or uh, logs that were big enough. And these are logs that um, had drifted over the ocean on the currents and landed on the shores of the islands. And um, it was well documented by uh, Vancouver when he was uh, Captain Vancouver when he was on the island of Kauai, and I think that was somewhere in, I don't know, the 17, late 1700s. And uh, on a property of one of the chiefs on Kauai, his name was, the chief's name was Kaeo. There are five big logs, bigger than any other uh, trees or uh, logs or canoes in the islands. And they asked them where they came from. They said, well, they came over the, the ocean, the Moana, and they were a gift. They're a gift from the gods, you know, they just drifted ashore and they made these big, beautiful va'a, these canoes. So that was the inspiration for uh, reaching out. And so, I know Nainoa, Nainoa and his dad, Nainoa Thompson and his dad, Myron Thompson and some others had come up and had talked to, uh, it was the first uh, introduction with Sea Alaska to, uh, plant this seed of what uh, this vision of uh, getting logs big enough to building these uh, voyaging canoes, deep sea voyaging canoes. And that story that I just told you was relayed to them. And so that was that. And then they, uh, uh, I think Byron Malat was the president at the time or the chairman or CEO. I'm not sure what his title was, but he and Judson Brown and others were quite intrigued with this and they agreed to it. So uh, there was a log search done and they found the two trees on Baranoff Island. Beautiful trees. And then so they were cut down and uh, eventually uh, see Alaska out of their amazing generosity. Um, paid for the uh, transport of these uh, logs to Hawaii as well. And, um, but the interest, the, 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 the real crux of this whole story, that is just a, uh, the beauty of it all is when Nainoa sat down with Judson Brown and Byron 
and he said, okay, you know, now, you know, I, I, I want to talk about something that's uncomfortable in both of our worlds, you know, from an indigenous viewpoint, uh, what we owe you, what we owe you for these logs, what, what's the, you know, the, the value that we, because we, you know, we want to pay for them. And, uh, you know, I really, uh, um, I have a hard, I have a really hard time telling this story without getting emotional because it's such a, a beautiful story. But Judson said, Judson told I know, oh, we don't want to, he goes, don't ever talk to us about money because um, that's not what's important here. He goes, he goes, all we gave you were trees or wood. All we gave you is wood. But what you gave us is uh, dreams. And that's far more important. And so this tremendous relationship between, you know, Hawaii, Polynesian Voyaging Society, Sea Alaska, Hawaii, and Alaska as native communities was forged at that time. And so when we voyage, when we voyage, uh, you voyage with us. And in fact, because of that relationship on Hokulea, we have uh, a plaque that's called Naumakua. Na Naumakua is a, a guardian, it's a spiritual guardian. And it's usually an ancestor who's passed, but still with us. And, uh, and on that plaque are those names. So there's, and these are names that you guys would know. So of course, you know, with Byron Malat's recent passing, Byron's on there. Judson Brown is on that plaque. He's one of our Almakua, one of our guides. Ernie Hillman was pivotal in um, our, trans, our, our travels through Alaska, is one of our guides. So just a little, a, a little bit of uh, rambling and, and the and beauty of uh, these relationships and, um, and, the, and the tone. It really is the tone that they set for uh, you know, from going forward from here into the future, which is a wonderful thing. That's so, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. No, I was going to say that's great. And I was going to fold in with Loggy Doc on the, the, um, that, that dream, you know, you're giving us the division and dream and, uh, the, the power of that translating on and passing on to other generations, uh, as well is something that we're working on here. So, those are powerful names and we want to, you know, definitely acknowledge, you know, all of the, the folks on your side, but then you, your acknowledgement of, of our leaders, uh, those are big shoes that are out there that left a mark. And I feel like all of us are going to do our best, you know, and never really fill those shoes, but we're going to do our best to do right in the spirit of things. Uh, and that's largely what this is about uh, to maintain that relationship uh, and, to hopefully uh, just bring a good message out um, and the connection and acknowledge that we are all connected and related and the world is better for it when we have these strong relationships. But a floggy doc, I wonder if you have, because you had the benefit of um, being a part of that some time ago and now you're in this role actually as a, a director on the Sea Alaska board as well. So just your thoughts on um, this time in history and, and connecting it to the past as we're looking forward to the future at the same time. Yeah, there's, um, when I, to, to bring you through a little history to kind of give it context, I had uh, many, many years ago now when I was still an undergrad wanted to figure out um, and identify, knowing that I, and, and had hear, hearing about a little bit about what the um, Polynesian Voyage Society had done, what I know had done, and, and um, the rest of the, the, the navigators had done in reclaiming, reawakening this, this tradition within their community and within their people. Um, wanted to see something like that here in Alaska and see, uh, you know, we know that there was an interconnectivity between us as Alaska Natives, our Haida Tlingit and Tsimshian people and our, our Hawaiian brethren. And we also knew that we would, we would travel, you know, we would travel the ocean too in our, in our canoes, in our yacht, 
and, and head down to as far as Mexico, over to Hawaii, over to other places. And so knowing through that process that we had our own navigation as well, um, I was really aiming everything at what that would look like for us to, to reawaken that within our people and within our community. Um, and in that search for knowledge, um, I was actually um, a, a fellow um, under then Senator Albert Kukesh. And he said, you should talk to Byron. You should ask him um, because he sits on the, the Polynesian Voyage Society and have a conversation with him about what that looks like. Um, and I loved the model of, of how PVS had set up a navigation training within the university um, to really help uh, their people help reclaim that, that way of life for themselves and just loved how that, that all prospered um, and wanted to engage as much as I could. And of course, Byron was willing to make that connection. Um, and in that process, um, ended up uh, training. Uh, we came over to Hawaii for 10 days um, with six Alaskans and we trained. We were the first to be trained um, for the worldwide voyage. We spent 10 days working hard on the Ba'a, um, working on fiberglass, you know, working with, with um, all of the sanders, painting, uh, working on, on some lashing, really doing some varnishing, really working hard on the Ba'as to get them ready to be, to be put into the ocean um, because there's a level of reciprocity that is, is a part of the, the process um, and a beautiful part of the process. And one of the reasons that, that I got uh, the honor to partake in this was um, because of Nainoa's wisdom in setting this up, the, the, the PBS board's wisdom in setting up this worldwide voyage, knowing that the message of Malama Hanua of taking care of our earth and taking care of our ocean had to spread beyond that moment in time, but also had to spread beyond uh, the people we were interacting with. Um, and so one of the um, part of the requirements for this worldwide voyage was to recruit teachers in, in various forms. Um, and at the time I was a professor at UAF, um, but they also had to, part of the, the crew, the 350 crew members also had to be uh, below a certain age. Um, and at the time I met that, I met that threshold as well, um, but also had to demonstrate that you had been on the ocean, that you had experience in, in your traditions and in your way of life. And um, in 98 was my first canoe journey. Um, we had gone with our, our Haida brothers and sisters from over in um, BC, over in Haida Gwaii to Juneau for celebration in 98. And that was my first, first open ocean canoeing um, that I had done and it was an amazing experience. Um, and so it was an application process. It wasn't just a, we're selecting you because you know certain people or because you're friends with certain people. I had to apply. I had to demonstrate that I had all of these different criteria met and that I, I would be willing to dedicate the time necessary um, to fulfill the role uh, of being one of the crew members uh, for this journey. And as I said, the reciprocity came in with, we had to dedicate our time not only working on the Ba'a, but also spreading that message in our own communities, talking to our own people about what, it, what Malama Hanua means and what, what our responsibility means. Um, when we go back home, and, and our responsibility to take care of our earth, to take care of our ocean um, and spreading that message to other students and other teachers. Mahalo, Asagidak. But when I hand it back to you, Bruce, I'm gonna, we have questions coming in, but we also wanna cover in this time a little bit on the, the prior voyage that came through and then uh, thoughts on the, how we can prepare for the one that's in the works uh, for next year um, but I also need to acknowledge, you know, and I, I think I did, but I'll do it a little more appropriate or better here is just with um, the, the Judson Brown and, and, and Byron, uh, you know, obviously were critical to see Alaska and uh, their, their legacy lives on, not just through the work they did, but also through the, the families that they had. Judson had a, a big family, Byron had a big family and a couple of Judson's uh, uh, niece and nephews are, are, are on the board as directors. Uh, and obviously we, we've got um, Anthony as the CEO for, for Sea Alaska right now. Uh, so just acknowledging all the, the family of the folks that were involved early that are still here and probably watching now and 
appreciating that acknowledgement. A couple of the questions though that first popped up are one, one is around the language. I think the world is it kind of always indigenous world anyway is marvels at the, the Hawaiian language and how it is kind of it's just it's everywhere when you when you show up on the islands and then I, I had the benefit of a little bit of time with Randy at the Kamehameha schools a few different times and and just witnessing uh, the, the Renaissance happening there and trying to learn lessons. And there was also a comment about the, the trees in the Koa forest, if there's efforts underway there to uh, uh, manage uh, the Koa forest. Uh, and if the, if you thoughts around that. Okay, yes. Oh, those are great, great questions. Um, Well, let me talk about first about the, the relationships and um, preparing for this uh, Wananui Akea voyage uh, around the Pacific. Um, you know, Anthony Malat now is uh, one of our board members at Polynesian Voyaging Society as well, which is um, was a very uh, calculated move to keep these relationships intact and uh, strong. Um, and so as far as uh, preparing for all of that, I, I guess um, I don't have too much to say about that because there would be others uh, Kuliana responsibility. But I do think that it's just uh, exactly what we're doing today, starting the conversation and the relationships and, uh, and asking those vital questions. You know, how can we do it? And then it, it'll uh, prompt those, uh, those thought, the insightfulness and those uh, answers. But I know definitely that uh, we are expecting the waters that we go through and the place that we go through to uh, in order to strengthen those relationships and to uh, you know gain a better understanding, um, having you know people on board from those uh, general areas uh, in, in many different capacities, um, one as guides through the waterway and uh, uh, your your home shores. And another one is just to be there, just to give you know some insight into uh, the knowledge of your culture and your home. So that's a given, as well as well. And it's it, it's it's not only a local thing, as well as um, welcoming uh, crew members onto the voyage and onto the uh, the um, in the far flung you know the uh, reaches of the Pacific. You know, because Joey Malat has been a crew member with us, and he sailed with us first in uh, 2000 from uh, Tahiti back to Hawaii. And then uh, his most recent voyage was from Rapa Nui, Easter Island, to Tahiti, and that was in uh, 2017. So, um, and we were expecting, and then uh, like uh, uh, Barbara and uh, some others had also sailed, like she had mentioned, on different uh, different areas of the Pacific, so we're expecting more of that. We, we surely are. Um, our forests, yes, you know. I mean, after the acknowledgement of the the declining or the declined health of our forests, um, Bishop Estate, where uh, Randy Fong, you know, works with and uh, Kwemea Schools. They're the largest landowner and land uh, holder uh, in the islands, uh, the archipelago of Hawaii. And since that time in the 90s, um, we've done uh, some planting and there's been ongoing efforts of planting. So the, the, there's some real, really, really beautiful uh, tree stands up there that, um, were planted, you know, like 20 years ago, you know, now 30 years ago, and uh, there's still some ongoing planting. And then up on the island of Maui now, there's a lot of planting on those uh, those mountain uh, pukukui, which is 
the West Maui Mountains. And, um, you know, we're starting to um, kind of make it a priority that we sail to these islands that we actually plant, you know, a, a bunch of trees. So there's that going on. But there's also the other beautiful thing about it, like you had talked about the language. Um, all of that, you know, be, be, before, prior to the Renaissance in the early 70s, um, it was like a really small group that was just uh, kind of hanging, hanging on to things, you know, with their mighty grasp and their uh, grip to, you know, to try and get everyone to find the importance, to see the importance that they see of the language and all of this. So slowly but surely, the language school started up, you know, in uh, the early 70s, to, I mean, early 80s to mid 80s. And now there's so many of those uh, schools. And I think the real beauty is that we've gone through, we've gone from in so many areas of the culture, and I'm speaking really from the voyaging standpoint, we've gone from seeking this knowledge and and um, understanding it and sailing to uh, truly get a uh, handle on it and really understand it. Because we know that, you know, if, if, if you don't understand it, the importance of it is, um, is very low. And, um, um, you know, protecting it and strengthening it is probably, the priority is probably not that great either. So, Anyway, we've gone from uh, trying to learn about it. And of course, we're always learning. We're still learning, but really starting to take more ownership for it in, in a lot of, in, in many ways, which is really neat. It's refreshing. Uh, it's honest. And um, so that's what's kind of, that's what we talk about a lot now, you know, on, on our voyaging side. Yeah. Are, are there voyages happening between now and then, or is this the next big one that's just, it's, it's, it's in the works? I, I had the benefit just by random chance in 2000, I was over there in Oahu uh, and happened to be there in the moment for, for when the, the canoe, when, the, when, the, when it arrived and all the doings. Uh, and it was quite the awesome week. I extended my trip. I was actually in law school at a moot court competition uh, and I almost got kicked out of law school because I stayed for another week and a half there with Joey. I, I just stayed because <laughs> there was so many things happening and uh, up in the, the valley there, it was just uh, quite the event. Oh, and, man. And, and I, I'm just wondering, given the pandemic uh, and how, how you've been weathering as a Polynesian voyaging society with the pandemic and the activity level over there right now. Yeah, great. Great question. Oh, what a challenge. Um, so first of all, let me just say this. I mean, we, 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 put, we pulled Hokule out of the water um, in June of last year, right in the middle of all this pandemic and this, um, this chaos. And uh, we, we, took her, uh, we took her apart and we relashed her back together and we, we relaunched the canoe in uh, mid-February of this year. And um, it was done in a way, I mean, we just did our best that we could do to keep everybody safe, you know, um, small groups, wear your masks, do a temperature check every day, uh, answer some core questions about your travels and if you've been around others and, you know, all that CDC kind of um, protocols. So, we just kind of stuck to that and made sure that everybody's honest. But so we, we got through it and we got the canoe back in the water and she's like fabulous and strong. And, um, and a volunteer base was pretty broad, but it was managed. So the, um, the daily, the daily groups were, you know, um, quite, quite small. Um, 
but we got her back in the waters. And then, so now we're gonna, we're, we are gonna do some sailing. Uh, this coming, uh, next Wednesday, we're gonna do a four or five day sail to Maui to do a little uh, honor to, uh, for uh, Chad Kalepa Babayan, one, our navigator who just passed away. And um, also to honor some of the, uh, there's only four remaining, four out of uh, 17 remaining crew members from the very first voyage in 76. So we're gonna do a little um, uh, tribute to them as well. You know, nothing, nothing big, you know, because of the, the situation with COVID, but we're gonna do that. But, but the, the, the main crux is that uh, all the people who would be sailing with us, most of them are new. Most of them were like fabulous volunteers that had over a hundred hours plus of volunteer service. And uh, to get this canoe, the canoes back in the water and taken care of. But they're also, um, crew, uh, they're also future crew members with the Voyaging Society and Voyaging. You know, <clears throat> so we're talking about people anywhere from age 18, to like 50, mid 50s, that, that range. And um, so we're gonna do that four trip, that four day sail to Maui, which is gonna be great. It's just gonna be, you know, 24 hours on, on the ocean and a bit of experience, which is great. And then we're gonna do a three week sail down to the equator and back. And, um, just because you know we can't be sailing to Tahiti, we actually can't even go to the outer islands without having a uh, it being a real deal, big, real big deal because of all these proto health protocols. So we're going to go to the equator and back. Um, the significance of that is that just above, the, just north of the equator, from three degrees north to about ten degrees north, is a belt that's known as the. Uh, common name, the doldrums, where the weather is really uh, changes quite uh, often, daily, in fact. It can be a dead calm, sunny sky, or it can be cloudy and squally and rainy and really a, a, a changing winds all over the place. So quite a quite a challenging place to sail. And so uh, all new crew members, we're going down there. It's an introduction of that area, uh, the life at sea and uh, everything about voyaging. So we're doing that. And everything that we're doing is leading up to, and we'll be doing other sails um, throughout the year offshore, but it's all about training. It's all training and getting the next generation of captains and watch captains and seamen, you know, sailors, um, Kind of get their feet wet. Yeah, that's that's good that there's activity still happening. We're gonna, we're going to move into another a history question, but as I go there, it's uh, you know out here it's sun shining now. We 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 had one week record snowfalls for quite a while, and then just a week later, record high temperatures. You know, it hit seventy in Juneau here, uh, and wow. It, uh, but a question that came in through the chat was about the if you have memories. Uh, from the voyage back in the, the 90s when you came through uh, Southeast Alaska and if any memories stand out to you there and just kind of navigating our waters versus what you, you know, what you have down there. Well, I gotta tell you, when we brought Ho uh, Hawaii Loa up, I, I was uh, on, on, on board when we brought, um, we started off at uh, Vancouver. And um, then we went to, uh, to Nanaimo across the way over at uh, Vancouver Island. Then we came up the Inland Passage. And then eventually from, uh, we got to Prince Rupert and then, um, and then to Ketchikan. But uh, because of the, you know, the sheltered waters and the, um, uh, the lack of wind for the most part, and the crazy currents in a lot of the areas, we just towed up, you know, we're just, we just towed the uh, Hawaii Loa up there. We did very little sailing. So from a navigational standpoint, um, 
it wasn't much. We're lucky. We're, I mean, more than lucky. We're really fortunate to have um, um, Hutch and um, and his crew on the Mark Allen to take us up to Prince Rupert and then um, at Fort Simpson, I think they took us all the way there. And then there was a crew that a uh, group that came down from Ketchikan that took us up to Ketchikan. I mean, the, the beauty of that, uh, that uh, you can never, local knowledge is so vital, it's so important. You know, the people that know those waters that, you know, I mean, you, you're, in, you're in safe hands, you know. So that worked out really well. But it was, I, I got to tell you, the water was cold, was nice. The weather was nice. We were in um, like June. It was June at the time, so it was nice. And um, the country was beautiful. <laughs> and our hosts everywhere we went were so gracious. You know, I just want to mention that about, you know, this indigenous way of, of being and welcoming and opening their uh, homes and their hearts and everything else. You know, like you had mentioned before, you know, in Hawaii, everywhere we've gone with it and have been welcomed by indigenous people. It's been the same. It's, it's the, the generosity of spirit and, uh, and food and welcoming and everything else and love has been just uh, purely amazing. So, um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what else to say about that, except that we really did have a good time. And, and, and then, you know, I mean, just being able to bring Hawaii Loa back up there and doing that whole um, reciprocation of aloha that, you know, I mean, we really did build this canoe. We really did sail it, you know, genuinely to Tahiti and back to Tahiti, to the Marquesas Islands and back to Hawaii. And to go back and share and say, thank you very much. It was just an honor. Well, Floggy Dog, feel free to weigh in uh, on, on anything here um, and, and maybe uh, some of your own work. I, I know you're somewhat of a, a building expert just around oceans, ocean health uh, and all the work there, but um, feel free to, to weigh in. And, and I think we also want to just keep reinforcing the, the shared values, kind of what's pulling us to the ocean. Uh, and I, I know you're uh, like you said, you, you, you had to apply, you had to show that you were already had a connection, um, but your thoughts kind of in this moment now, as everybody's thinking about the ocean and um, the connections here. And then when we come back around to Bruce, uh, there are questions more about the specifics of the, the voyage that's coming. And um, if you have a route mapped out and uh, uh, timing and all that kind of thing. Yeah. The, um quite a few years ago now, again, in my undergrad, I had the opportunity to go to the UN Climate Control Conference in Copenhagen. Um, and in that climate control conference, had the opportunity to sit in and listen to um, the ocean breakout conversation. We were um, all students who had the opportunity to engage in this space as guests of the Arctic Sol Circumpolar Council. And I I'm forever thankful for their willingness to allow us to tag along under their NGO status. Um, in that ocean conversation, that breakout conversation, um, there wasn't any indigenous NGO folks. There wasn't any indigenous people in that space talking about ocean acidification, climate changes, impacts to our ocean. Um, but we were listening to a presentation uh, from some scientists talking about how um, they were proposing to dump some counter agent into our ocean to balance out the level of acidification that was taking place. And I was horrified to hear that this was actually being considered that folks were actually listening to this kind of presentation without any um, questioning of, of what that would do to our ecosystem, to our, our ocean, to our way of life. Um, and, and witnessing and watching how international bodies could come together international indigenous people could come up together across boundaries, across international divides and have a voice and a unification that brought a voice to an international table 
um, that was strengthened by each other and strengthened by having each other's back and, and standing beside one another um, as they were pushing for uh, equal uh, equity being built into this conversation around uh, combating and um, reacting to climate change and its impact on our people. Um, and through that, that process really have been working over the last 10 plus years um, with conversations with folks to see what it would look like for us to formalize um, an engagement space around the Pacific, um, uniting our indigenous people in a political sphere, a table that is our own, that we make our own, um, that allows us to set our own policies, law and governance for how we view um, the rights of the ocean and, and allowing that conduit to speak through us, allowing the ocean to speak through us and giving voice to the rights of the ocean. Um, we were just in a conversation the other day with um, one of our Hawaiian uh, sisters who has been working to um, get recognition of their, their water systems as teachers. And, you know, I, I, to, to think that our ocean, to think that our waterways could have that same recognition as, as teachers in, in our world and in our space, what it would do for the future of those spaces and ensure that that continuity would continue on for our future generations. I don't wanna look at my grandchildren and tell them that I didn't do enough to tell them this is what salmon used to taste like. I don't wanna to have to describe that to anyone because I want them to experience the same traditions as our, as our kids are getting right now and as our ancestors have for the last 10,000 years. Um, and so for me, that space has always been a political pull um, and something that continues to pull me in into that space because for whatever reason, I just, it clicks for me and it, it makes sense. And so we'll continue to push in that space and continue to uh, pull each other up and, and walk alongside each other as we continue to, to have those conversations and, and find opportunities to, to raise our indigenous our ancestors' voices into the current uh, political space. Said so gently. She's being uh, toned down today. She can <laughs> come, come speak. Uh, uh, so Bruce, we are curious about the the sequence or the um, timing and a little bit of the 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 route that that that's the thinking on the process there and. Um, if there really are any, you know, immediate next steps that folks should be looking to. The, I know there's a the website people can go to and find more information, um, but just to hear from you, I, th I think would be would be great. Yeah, um, let me let me just I want to circle back just a, a bit to what to what Barbara just alluded to about you know the river uh, being our teacher. You know, it, it has, um, I mean, just an old sense of understanding and looking at our world as a relationship. You know, it's, it's a relationship. We're, we're in this world, you know, we're not masters of it, you know, to that degree that we can just do crazy things like she just said, you know, just go, add some kind of foreign material as, as a possible solution and who knows what the effects are going to be. But just an idea about the river being a, a teacher, you know, as we went um, around the world of Olamahonua, you know, one of the goals was to, you know, learn. I mean, it's always exploration. It's always to, to try and learn something that could be of tremendous value to us all. And, um, and one of it, one of the things, one of the key things was indigenous wisdom, being a, uh, a guide, a teacher as you move forward. And uh, that hasn't changed. That, was, that will still be a big part of this Moana Nui Akea Pacific voyage. Um, I guess, you know, the, it's, it's such a, I, I don't know, you know, through voyaging, you know, you really don't, you have an idea of uh, what you're, where you're trying to get to. And initially it was all about navigation. 
it was really about learning the re rediscovering the navigation, relearning the navigation, and then um, um, putting that to practice. You know, and going from Hawaii to Tahiti, and from Tahiti to the Cook Islands, and then on to New Zealand and Rapa Nui, and all of that. Um, and then slowly, you know, through that process, you know, a, a larger understanding came about, came about to, you know, these oceans that we travel over and that we, uh, we call home and, um, you know, um, and meeting others that have been warriors, you know, for the oceans over the years. And then getting a deeper understanding of it. And so, you know, I mentioned earlier, you know, that what, what you don't truly understand, you're going to have a hard time protecting. So through that uh, last, that voyage around the world and the people that we've met, we've got, we've gained a lot more insight through that process. And we see the uh, tremendous value of a healthy ocean. Uh, you know, being a, being a water planet, being an ocean planet, predominantly um, the decline of health of an ocean, like the decline of health of our forests in Hawaii is not going to be a good thing for the future. And so it's just a matter of setting out on this journey to learn, to share, uh, get a greater uh, awareness and uh, hopefully get more people on board with that understanding and awareness and learn from those, from those uh, individuals and those cultures as well. And to share all of that knowledge that, you know, uh, as we go along. So, you know, it kind of, uh, with that being said, you know, it starts in Alaska, you know, it starts in Alaska, starts with our relationship there. And it goes all the way down the Americas down all the way down to Chile and South America. And that's where we depart <clears throat> the continent and we head across, we weave our way through the Pacific over to New Zealand, to Aotearoa. And then from there, we make our way uh, north, eventually up towards uh, Okinawa, Japan, Korea, and Russia. And uh, the whole crux of it is that every shore Every bay, every place that we um, we uh, we stop at, or in all the places between that we don't stop at, we're unable to. We share this ocean, you know, and 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 and, and, and with that share, with that shared space or resource or life source, um, we all have a sense of uh, kuleana responsibility. To, to, to care for it. it. Just like how we would care for a loved one, you know, a brand new child into our family, an elder, you know, in our family, the same way, you know, have that same sense of <clears throat> appreciation, admiration, love, you know, and uh, <clears throat> start learning how to do that and why it's important. You know, I mean, and we do this, we do this for the future, like, you know, like, uh, Barbara had said, you know, I mean, for her children, her grandchildren, those who come after us, we do it for them. You know, that's, that's going to be our gift. Uh, that's the way we see it. That's what we, but and that, that's kind of the crux of the voyage and the, the, the journey. Um, that's the overall um, kind of picture of, of the travels. It's going to be a lot more involved in that. It's actually going to be a larger voyage of scope than the worldwide voyage, if you can imagine that. That's how big the Pacific Ocean is. That's how grand and expansive it is that this voyage of Wananui Akea across the Pacific is actually going to be, have more miles, more stops, uh, more crew members than the worldwide voyage. So the worldwide voyage, we had over 300 crew members. We traveled, I'm not sure, 47,000 miles and kind of wove our way around uh, as we went around the world. But uh, 
this next voyage is going to be a lot bigger in so many ways. And I think with that being said, I think the return and the relationships that are going to be built is going to be um, a lot more um, special and uh, impactful. That's that's wonderful. And thanks for <clears throat> educating us along the way here. Uh, it, it's I don't think it's intuitive to folks to think that it's going to be longer and more and, and just it's the world. You think about going around the world and then going around the Pacific being even uh, a bigger push um, <clears throat> that, that's that's powerful and it is that pacific that connects us in so many ways uh, and we just uh, admire the leadership coming from you know you and the polynesian voyaging society we're also admiring how you're staying healthy and safe right there just on your lunch break as <laughs> as things are moving we can see it behind you there uh, uh. so we, we we appreciate you taking some time on Earth Day. We, we thought today uh, would be okay to carve out a little lunch hour on Earth Day to share with folks um, some big ideas that are actually proven to be very doable. And it's indigenous led, indigenous leadership, but just being indigenous is what is gonna be something that does right by the ocean. Uh, if, if there's more indigenous knowledge and thought and care around the world that'll achieve the outcomes um, that a lot of folks are looking for. Um, I do wanna maybe just ask Wafalagi Doc if she has any closing comments and then back to you, Bruce, for any, any closing words on, on Earth Day 2021. I just wanna say hello goodness to Shanann, uh, mahalo for the time um, between the two of you, Joe, Uncle Bruce, you know, I've been, I've been taking a lot of notes because the two of you keep dropping some some serious bombs with just the the generalized conversation we're having and so i'm just thankful for your knowledge and and your willingness to share um and and be in this space together so how and as you do bruce i don't you mentioned 1977 as being a key moment and this is just me just a little personal note and that was a key and um a key year in history because that was the year uh, elvis died oh. but, Gosh. That, that also happened to be, and I remember that though, because I was alive then, but it was the year my, my father died in 1977. And he happened to be born the same year as Elvis. As well, so, so they were the same age. Uh, but my father was a uh, Kwashka Kwan uh, from Humpback Salmon from, from Yakutat. And, and just closing on that note of acknowledging the fact that we, we generally are salmon people uh, and our children and great, great grand, grandchildren are gonna be salmon people. And I always admire Wathlagi Doc for, you know, thinking forward that way. She's wise beyond her years uh, as our youngest director on the Sea Alaska board. We're, we're, we're fortunate to have her. And I know that that's built into the framework of how you operate over there. Uh, as far as always um, teaching and learning mode, that, that's what keeps us young is, is to always be learning, but you're always training and teaching. And that's just something we all need to get better at. So I want to part with that, with thanking you for that type of work that you do over there. Well, thank you so much, Joe. Um, yeah, I want to say mahalo nui loa, you know, to, for putting this on. And, uh, you know, I mean, just talking about these, um, just talking about these things and um, is building a relationship already, which is so wonderful. Um, you know, in the end, in the end, uh, with this voyage, you know, it really is about a vision. You know, we talk about, you know, our mountains. I mean, we, we talk about our, our mountains and our, our forests and our lands, you know, truly being uh, natural habitats for the life that has always been there and thrived. You know, I, every time I, I think of Alaska, I think of that, I think of Alaska, I just think of the millions millions of salmon that run up those streams, you know, yearly, annually. And um, it should be like that. There's no reason for it to not be like that. And for it, for that, for the impact that um, prevents that from happening, that come from outside sources, is not okay. It's un inexcusable because 
that's just not okay. So that's why this worldwide voyage, and that's why, you know, getting people to understand that, you know, what, if, if our oceans truly, the, the health of these oceans truly decline and um, to the point where um, they might actually um, die off somehow, oh man, we're in big trouble. We're in, we're in really, really big trouble. So with that being said, um, you know, it's this vision. We try and just keep it close and just kind of learn more about it because we have to. And um, I thank you folks for always just being such good friends, family. And, um, and uh, that's what we're going to need as we go forward. And happy Earth Day to everybody. We're so happy to have a day like this that we acknowledge, you know, uh, Onua, yeah, Mother Earth, because she deserves to be honored and cared for. Yes, absolutely. Per perfect. Mahalo. We, we, we will close there. Give our love to Nainoa and the family. Uh, and we'll be seeing you soon again, I'm sure. Okay. All right. Kia